The time for cutting silage is approaching in the state. Nebraska's corn crop is currently a bit behind schedule, though, as the percentage in the dough stage is 11 points off the five-year average, and the amount dented is eight points behind the norm. Earlier this week, we talked with Nebraska Extension Beef Feedlot Specialist Galen Erickson about cutting silage for cattle diets. We started by asking how to maximize yields based off the timing of cutting. It's really a fine line between harvesting when you get maximum yield versus quality versus the right moisture. But uh, once you get to mid-August, it's time to be, if you're going to put up silage, now is the time to be thinking about it, preparing and uh, planning because it's the time to get started probably in the next week or two. What position does that now operate in the feedlot diet? How valuable is it for the cattle? Well, you know, we've been, silage is a traditional feed. It's been around for a long time. Uh, it has uh, TDN about 75, but it does vary depending upon when you cut it. And so we've been revisiting how does silage fit in today's diets when you have distillers grains and, and other byproducts in the diet. Uh, how does it work for backgrounding? But more recently, we're interested in can smaller, maybe traditional farmer feeders feed more than just as a rough feed source, and is that more profitable? And it appears it is as long as we put it up correctly and, and minimize shrink. Tell me about some of the dangers in making sure it is stored correctly. Yeah, you know, the key for silage, and, and whether it's high moisture corn or corn silage, is getting the air out. Air is the enemy. It's, it's got to go anaerobic during fermentation to, to preserve itself. And so uh, the right moisture, because water helps keep it anaerobic, but you don't want it too wet. Uh, and if it gets a little too dry it, it, and you're putting it in the bunker, it might be hard to pack and, and get the air out during the, during the packing process. But with all that said, uh, we think that if you look at the data from Pioneer and the data now that we have from the University of Nebraska, as well as data from the University of Wisconsin, you need to be thinking about a dry matter of 36 to 38 percent, in our opinion, and that therefore, you know, 62 to, to 64 percent water. Uh, which is a little drier maybe than traditional. Now, more recently, we've looked at maybe even going as high as 43 dry matter, and it has some implications, but the drier the silage gets, the more yield you get, but quality does start to get, get depressed. So as soon as it gets to black layer from that point on, or grain maturity, plant, plant quality really deteriorates over time. So we're, we're trying to fine tune this recommendation yeah. But if I had to tell producers today, I would target 37 dry matter. Now, as you look at that cornfield, how do you assess when the time is based off of what that moisture might actually be? Yeah, it's a real challenge, as you know, when you have standing corn. Uh, our best recommendation is always to chop some, whether that's by hand using a, a chipper or uh, actually pull in with your silage chopper. The problem is most people, when they want to start cutting silage, it might be a custom operator. They don't want to chop a little and then wait a couple days for a dry matter analysis. So uh, our best estimates are for you to hand harvest some plants, chop it up if you can, and, and run a dry matter overnight to get the best measure. You can also do microwave dry matters, which are a little less accurate. But the other way, which is much easier, is looking at the physiology on the corn plant and uh, basically looking at the ears and judging it from milk line. So when you look at milk line, you want to be at about 3 quarters of milk line on that kernel to really pull in with your chopper and you should be in that 35 to 38 percent dry matter. And are we talking about then feeding it more in the diet like you were mentioning before? Yeah, you know, we have research that's ongoing at looking at the traditional inclusion in finishing diets which would be in that 15 percent of the diet or so on a dry matter basis. We've been looking at it as high as 40 or 50 percent in the diet and uh, if you manage shrink and get it put up well and maintain the energy in the silage, it, it appears that the most profitable level, if you're a farmer feeder and can handle it, would be in that 30 to 40 percent of the diet. The UNL Beef website contains more resources on using silage. We'll link to that information on the Market Journal website.